At this moment, we are all surrounded by countless particles. We are made of particles, and the world around us is formed of myriads of tiny particles. In this world of subatomic particles, researchers find the same perfection as in the world of large phenomena, the cosmos. But how can it be that this world, seemingly chaos, has such a high order and structure? Is there a divine hand behind the creation of our cosmos and every little thing that guides and directs everything? Follow us on this journey to the perfection of the cosmos and to the question, who is in truth the creator of the universe? Harmony and order instead of chaos and chance. Until now, science made a crucial mistake. The history of the universe, from its birth in a violent explosion to its ongoing expansion, seemed to be characterized by violence, chaos, and destruction. But slowly, scientists are rethinking by observing the fundamental laws of nature. They are discovering in the cosmos more and more order and constants that provide a stable foundation for the evolution of the universe in its entirety and life. It's hard to look at these images and not be struck by the beauty and perfection of the universe. In the dance of Earth and Venus around the Sun, researchers recently revealed a hidden code. The two celestial bodies form a perfect floral structure at their mean distance. Everything in this cosmos seems to have been constructed not only to be highly functional, but also with a strange attention to detail and beauty. From the hidden geometric patterns to the fantastic richness of diversity, there seem to be billions of galaxies following a secret order. Everything meshes perfectly, incomprehensible coincidences, and the finest precision give rise to stars and planets and, in our case, life. Nowhere is this perfection more easily recognizable than in the balance of the mathematical equations in the physical constants. But can the creator of this universe have been a genius of mathematics and geometry? Or is everything only coincidence? Up to now, numerous natural scientists defend themselves vehemently against the concept of God. For decades, it seemed much easier to blame the existence of the universe on chaos or chance instead of recognizing behind the cosmos, nature, and our own lives a perfect creation inspired from an unknown source. The Perfection of Physics All physical constants that control the behavior of the universe must be finely tuned. Only in this way, everything interlocks. Dust disks become glowing stars, planets dance around their suns, and also, only in this way, life could develop on a planet like the Earth. If only one parameter had deviated, our Earth would possibly never have become the warm water world it is today. The more scientists find out about the conditions under which life can and could develop, the more they understand that this is such a lucky coincidence that it could hardly have sprung from pure chaos. The degree of precision and fine-tuning in the relationships of the four fundamental forces and all other forces in the cosmos is so perfect that it must be controlled from some source. What is the purpose of the universe? For centuries, scholars, philosophers, and ordinary people alike have been fascinated by the question of the purpose of the cosmos. However, we must keep in mind that earlier civilizations of people thought quite differently about the universe. Once people thought that the Earth was huge and even that it's all there was. In these ideas, the sun and the moon were nothing more than small dots that sent light to the Earth. Over the centuries, we had to realize that our world and we ourselves are tiny. What has not changed at all over all these epochs and worldviews, however, is the question about the meaning of this world and the meaning of our existence, and even the question about a creator who could be behind it all. From this question, religions as well as different branches of science developed and all answer the question in a different way. In the world of classical physics, the universe appears as a miraculously constructed clockwork whose mechanisms follow precise laws. But even in this apparent order, there are mysteries. Why do the fundamental forces and constants follow the rules so precisely? Where do the rules come from and who made them? Quantum physics, on the other hand, takes us to the limits of the calculable and observable. It teaches us that we live in a world full of possibilities and that we ourselves are possibly the co-creators of this universe. Indeterminacy relations and quantum fluctuations 
can seem like chaos at first glance. In truth, they are just incredible intelligence that allows many variations and possibilities to emerge. In the subatomic realm, perfect clockwork stops, at least as far as we can currently measure and explore. In the world of the smallest particles, the greatest unknowns still await us, and perhaps here scientists will find the answers to the questions of where all that we can see and are comes from, and from what source it is fed. Philosophy and metaphysics, unlike natural science, do not exclude thoughts about a higher being who designed the universe. Some schools of thought consider a creator probable, or even a condition. Others say that there is a pure but intangible intelligence that gives rise to everything, and we may be an inseparable part of that intelligence. Even in ancient times, the great scholars racked their brains over this question. The views of antiquity range from the Platonic idea of an ordered cosmos to the Epicurean idea of a random universe. However, Socrates, Plato, and company did not find a real answer either. The religious conception solved the problem by seeing behind all phenomena a creator god, or depending on the religion, several creator gods. Although some saints, clerics, and believers claim to have experienced or talked to this god, there is currently no evidence for the existence of such an entity or instance. Even if we trace the arc from physics to religion, we must say that the question of the purpose of the universe must continue to remain unanswered to this point. The Anthropic Principles Nevertheless, we continue to try to approach the question of the purpose of the universe and perhaps we will find an answer. In the fascinating vastness of cosmology, two principles emerge that illuminate the fundamental relationship between our universe and the existence of intelligent life. The weak anthropic principle reminds us that we are not mere observers of the universe, but an integral part of it. It states that the properties of the universe may be extra so as to make our existence possible. Quantum physics says that the world of matter lasts only as long as the observer measures it. The observers in this case are us. If we combine the weak anthropic principle with the views of quantum physics, the universe seems to be mysteriously aligned with us. It's as if the cosmic building blocks were an invitation to life itself. But is this just a coincidence? Or is there much more to it? The strong anthropic principle goes a bit further. It creates the hypothesis that the universe not only exists by chance, but may be designed to give rise to intelligent life, possibly with a purpose or plan. An early thinker of anthropic worldviews was Lawrence Joseph Henderson. In 1913, he discovered the incredible perfection in nature. Among other things, Henderson investigated a fine-tuning with which water acts on this earth and makes life possible. It almost seems as if water was created for this purpose alone. In 1961, Robert Dickey transferred Henderson's findings to the fine-tuning of physical forces. In the 1970s, cosmologists Brandon Carter and John D. Barrow first formulated the two anthropic principles. The ideas of these thinkers and researchers have since sparked an avalanche of discussion and controversy that continues to this day. In the end, while even these principles cannot say with certainty whether we are the accidental products of a seemingly endless chain of cosmic events or the creation of a conscious power, they do add an interesting dimension to conventional scientific thinking about the meaning and purpose of the universe. Does the answer lie in origins? In the early 1920s, George Lamet, a clergyman and natural scientist, came up with the idea that the answer to a creator and the meaning of the universe was most likely to be found at the beginning. By the discovery of the expansion of the galaxies, Lamette came to the theory of the Big Bang. His discoveries were considered to be groundbreaking, but in the end, they also did not provide an answer to what had been the cause or the initiator of this point of origin. The question whether a creator gave the starting signal for the whole existence or whether the Big Bang was only the product of physical processes remained further open. The theory even raised far more questions than it answered because what was before the Big Bang? Did there exist another universe before ours? Or was there nothing? And what was in the space where our universe is expanding today before it began to expand? Researchers hoped to find answers through the discovery of the cosmic background radiation. 
The radiation was predicted by Lemet and first detected in 1965 by scientists Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson. The radiation is supposedly a remnant of the Big Bang and is said to prove the expansion of the universe. However, there are now reasonable doubts about these observations. The latest findings of the James Webb Telescope even allow conclusions that the Big Bang never existed. In the background radiation, researchers have now found signals that are far older than the Big Bang, and even hints of the existence of other universes or dimensions have emerged. Does mathematics prove God's existence? In the 1950s, German physicist Burkhard Heim worked on a mathematical structure that would represent the unification of fundamental forces. The result was a model of 12 dimensions. In fact, many of the mathematical puzzles and equations that remain unsolved today make sense if eight or more dimensions are assumed. If Heim's model four dimensions are reserved for space and time, eight further dimensions represent so far unknown areas of our reality, and respectively, the uppermost dimensions are something like God, and for us humans by science, not attainable. However, Heim's theory was never recognized despite its conclusiveness. The assumption of eight unknown dimensions prepares apparently even more uneasiness for most scientists than the assumption that the cosmos is based on chaos and coincidences. But what do you think? Which of these answers or which explanation approach comes closest to the truth?